Hi, in this presentation we are going to talk about Salad Goes Rusty. We walk you through the process of integrating the Rust programming language into the Schema Salad tool. My name is Giuseppe Eletto. I'm a school researcher and member of the Alpha Parallel Computer Group at the University of Turin, where I'm also pursuing my master's degree in computer networks and architectures. Salad is a schema language used to describe structured linked data documents, typically written in YAML or JSON format. It describes rules for preprocessing, like the resolution of imports and includes embedded within the document, structural validation, such as the types allowed for a given field, and hyperlink checking in order to maintain document integrity. This leads to reproducible code, faster development, and happy researchers. Likely, most of you are already familiar with the fact that the common workflow language is described through the Salad schema. However, today's presentation goes deeper into a specific aspect, the Schema Salad tool. This application holds the remarkable capability of not only crafting parses for the common workflow language, but also for all the other standards described using Salad. Currently, it can generate parses for six different programming languages that are C Sharp, Python, TypeScript, Dlang, C++, and Java. What is Rust? According to their website, Rust is a language that empowers everyone to build reliable and efficient software. This empowerment stems from its three defining characteristics. First of all, Rust is a compiled language, and like C and C++, has no runtime and no garbage collector. And the other two core characteristics are the advanced type system and the ownership model that guarantees memory and thread safety. For instance, within the Rust ecosystem, variables are immutable by default and the references follow the rule of one writer or multiple readers. Now that we have introduced the technology we used, let's move on to why we added Rust to the Schema Salad tool. Well, Rust is the most loved language of the past seven years, at least according to surveys. So it is likely that more and more applications will be written using this language. Also, it can be deployed virtually everywhere, from Windows to Linux or as WebAssembly on the browser with native performance and zero modification. And lastly, we used CERD, the most popular digitalization library for Rust. It allows developers to parse documents not only in YAML or JSON, but in all the data languages for which CERD has a plugin for. So, for example, you can choose to send your freshly deserialized structure over the network using the message pack, without having to write a single line of Rust code, at least for the parser. Each generated parser is equipped with this feature. The DSL family refers to the preprocessor, specifically the support for imports and includes that can be resolved locally or from the internet, while the RRC refers to the atomic reference counter, a structure found in the Rust standard library that allows ownership of structure without actually duplicating the allocation in multi-threaded context. By disabling it, the parser behaves the same way, but without multi-thread support. To date, no feature is enabled by default. We decided to have a schema salad tool write only a set of Rust macros instead of the actual code. Macros are pieces of code that are expanded during compilation into more verbose code using a technique commonly known as metaprogramming. So the full implementation is squeezed in just a type definition, in this case the struct workflow with all its fields and a bunch of comments. You can see, for example, on line 8, the field CWVL version, which is a type option, and its attribute that set it to a default value when the option is known. We choose this solution to allow developers to easily modify types without having to go through all the boilerplate required to make the code work. This, instead, is an example of an application that prints the fields of the workflow structure we saw earlier. The actual deserialization is done at light 8 using the third YAML plugin, calling the fromreader function on the file opened above, and declaring workflow as the type. If the deserialization is successful, the struct will be printed out. Generating the CWVLRS library declared on the line 3 is as simple as for any other support of the language. Cool the tool, specify the language and the output directory, and set the schema definition. 
The tricky step to implement in this extension was any. From the common workflow language specification, the any type validates for any non-null value. Rust, however, requires types to be known at compile time and there is no way to deserialize an unknown type. Therefore, we chose to use an enum because it can hold a value for each of its variants. As you can see on line 2, we have a bool that can contain the actual bool value, true or false, and on line 8, the object which contains solid object. In the second code snippet, instead, you can see what we want to implement in the future. The few phase deserialization. Currently, the type any can only be used by doing pattern matching on it, but that might be a somewhat verbose operation. Our purpose then is, after taking a reference to a field whose actual types are known at compile time, in this case the field of a possible extension of the workflow structure, to perform a second deserialization on it, specifying the type we think or know it contains. However, this leads to two problems. The memory on the heap must be cloned, because we cannot replace the field with the new type, and the other is that the idea resolution on this object cannot be done, because we have lost the supporting data from the first deserialization. Our next goals are merge our code base with the official one, because currently the code is available on my personal repository on GitHub, after we want to publish an official common word for language crate on the Rust community crate registry, and this version may have specific tuning made by us, and in the meantime continue development by fixing the features that are not yet fully functional, for example the idea resolution. Thank you.